Why do you have a picture of a dude? Uh, I don't know. That's like a Yeah. None of your business. Shut up. <laughs> oh, are we ready? Whether it's Matt Billingsley from Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Dylan Wissing of Kanye West, Carter Beaufort from the Dave Matthews Band, or Neil Peart of Rush, my personal favorite, all modern drummers play on virtually the identical equipment when it comes to acoustic drums. Since drummers are typically in the back of the stage, you usually don't get a close up look, up, up close look at the kits, and uh, it's kind of hard to see what's going on back there. So today, I'm going to tell you about the major points and components of a modern drum. I have been playing drums for about 35 years. When I was about your age, I was a touring full-time professional drummer. Now I just do it part-time. So that is my uh, one, of, one of my drums. Fully assembled tom. Uh, tom. Call that a tom tom. Okay, the first thing you come to is the top head, which is referred to as the batter head. It's called a batter head because you hit it. This is the one that you actually hit with the stick. Uh, this is the dented head. You can see it's got holes around the side. That blue thing is used to muffle it for microphone purposes, typically. And that is always on the top of the drum, regardless of what kind it is. This is a resonator head, which uh, we refer to as a rezo. And in this case, it's the bottom of my snare drum. They call it a snare drum because those are called snares and they vibrate against the resonating head and create the distinct sound of an actual snare drum. Um, that's that now, the heads are held against the shell by hoops. There's an upper and lower hoop. Some of them are die cast, some of them are stamped, some of them are forged steel. This one is actually a die cast hoop, which is good. The die cast hoops can actually hold more tension pressure on the lug nuts, which I'll show you, depending on like, say like Joey Jordison from Slipknot, his snare drum is tight, really, really tight. It's got a lot of high tension on the top end in particular. This is actually a, uh, my personal snare drum, which is a Joey Jordison signature snare drum. So it can actually handle the, the tensions. This is a tension rod. It's basically just a, uh, like a bolt, kind of a machine bolt. And it goes through a hole and a flanged hole. It's a flat side little tab on, this, on the outside circumference of the hoops. And it bolts into a lug mount, which is in the shell. This is a lug mount. And um, this one's actually got a little washer on it. And you can see it's a, just screws in there, and you tighten it up and tune it the way you want it, and then it's good to go. The shell is the main body of the drum. This is a steel shell. Um, there are all kinds of, of other materials. Uh, Pearl Drums actually lists um, acrylics. John Bonham from Led Zeppelin used an actual, like an acrylic resin um, drum kit. Um, this one is steel. The shells of the rest of my drums are wood. Um, the shells can be either wrapped with like a laminate. You know, it's almost like a, like a countertop. But these are actually lacquered, so it's actually painted and then lacquered over the top with a real high gloss. Um, and then the last thing to mention is a mounting system. Um, mounting systems get kind of controversial with drummers. Uh, there's a big issue particularly with bass drums, you know, that's the big one on the bottom. A lot of times the other drums sit on top of that bass drum on a stand that actually penetrates with a hole through that bass drum. And it puts a lot of weight on the round, you know, wood of the drum or whatever the material is. Um, even though round is, of course, the, the strongest of all the shapes as far as weight support, over years, you know, typically you can have these things for years and years and that kind of weight, you wouldn't stand on it, you know, and just sit there or sleep on it because it may, may deform. And then you'd have a problem because if you have like die cast hoops and you're trying to conform that to a warped shell, you know, now you're out of round, you're gonna have all kinds of issues. You gotta get rid of it basically. There's no fixing it, you know, for the most part. So the, with these mounting systems, you have penetrating and non-penetrating types. 
The penetrating ones physically have a hole in the side of the wood, and then the penetrating part goes into that hole and then fastens to the outside. So now you've got, you know, weight for one thing, and the second part is you now have a hole in the side of your shell. And one of the purposes of the shell is to, to amplify the resonance of the bottom head with the tone of the top head. So the material is very important. I mean, the less hole, the fewer holes you have in it, the better off you are. You have to have some holes. You have small vent holes because when you compress the head, it's got to have somewhere to go. The air's got to have somewhere to go. This is a non-penetrating system. It actually bolts on to the top and the bottom of these lug mounts, and then the drum actually hangs on the out by the outside of the shell. So there are there are not there's not a hole here for this thing to, to actually be holding on to. That is my uh, the whole thing. And that's another picture. All right. Drum kits are complex machines made up of many pieces, components, and assemblies. Most people don't look at it as a machine, but when you start maintaining one, you know, that costs seven or eight thousand dollars, you start realizing this is actually a machine. You know, that, that has to be properly maintained. Um, with drum kits being so far away from the audiences, you usually don't get an up, up close look. So this was hopefully a little bit of uh, a little bit of information is something you wouldn't normally get. Okay.